Our final teller is a proud Massachusetts native. She is a writer, spoken word artist, and public speaker who, at an early age, was diagnosed with Usher syndrome and was told she would eventually lose her sight and her hearing. Undaunted, she graduated from Boston College and did postgraduate work at Rat Radcliffe and Harvard University. And in addition to becoming a writer, she went on to become a videographer and a composer. In 2000, she lost both her sight and hearing completely. After receiving a cochlear implant in 2001, she created her website, Destination Mirth, and began bringing her stories to life on stage. She has interviewed the likes of Marley Maitland, Fran Leibowitz, and is a regular contributor to Edible Boston, Boston Spirit, JewishBoston.com, amongst others. And as if that was not enough, she's currently completing her memoir, Are You There? Please welcome the last teller in our Voices on the Green installation, I Was There, coming to the stage, Nina Livingstone. Right here. Got it. So thank you. So December 1985, back then I had tunnel vision. It was like looking through a pipe and um, I wore hearing aids in both ears. So at that time my friend Joyce called me and she said, hey, I gotta pick up a scarf for my husband. Do you wanna come with me, Bloomingdale's? I said, sure. So I went with her we walked into Bloomingdale's, and we walked towards the scarf section. So she said, you know, I'm going to be here a few minutes. I'll, I said, that's okay. I'm looking for gloves, so I'll find you later in a, a few minutes. So I had my mobility cane at the time, and I walked down the aisle, swaying my cane left and right, looking for the glove section. Suddenly, I noticed this incredibly Gorgeous, I mean gorgeous saleswoman. I, I was struck, so I walked over towards her, and I, I was kind of nervous, you know. I, I just said, you know, I'm looking for gloves. Um, can you help me? You know, I mean, I was so nervous, I was trembling. I didn't want to stare at her, you know. So, um, but she wasn't responding. So, I said. Um, okay, I'm sorry. Um, I'm looking for gloves. Uh, can you help me? But she, she, was, she was silent. So I stepped back and I said, maybe you can hear me? I said, May, let me, maybe I should sign, I said. So do you know where I can find gloves? I said, can you help me? I'm signing. I'm really doing my best. I, I mean, I was nervous, you know. And, um, and what struck me about it was she had this long blonde hair cascading below her shoulders. She had piercing blue eyes, full red lips, beautiful complexion. I mean, she was just, you know, whatever. So I said, um, I said let, me, let me sing again. Maybe, maybe you can't um, hear me. I'm, I'm going to do it again. Do you know where I can find gloves? You know, no. Okay. So I stepped back, I didn't want to give up, you know, I wanted those gloves and well, you know. So I stepped back and I said, um, maybe you can't see me? I said, I can see you. I said, I have tunnel vision, I can see straight ahead, but maybe you can't see me? So I said, well, um, well I think, you know what, this is really cool. Bloomingdale's hired someone who has limited sight and hearing. I mean, how cool is that, you know? And if this is true, I can say, hey, I was there. I met there. I met her. So I stepped back, and I said, um, okay, let me try again, because I'm having considerable frustration here. I said, if you can't see me, maybe you can hear me a little, I don't know, maybe you want me to take your hand, I could sign in your hand. I could do a little tactile sign language. Like, you know, I'm looking for a black glove. You know, can you help me? 
I could sign that in your hands, I said. You know, I mean, if you want. Um, I don't want to take your hand, but, you know. Well, I was frustrated. Nothing was happening. I mean, she was, she was like in a trance or something. So I'm saying to myself, I don't want to give up, you know. So I, I feel someone tapping on my shoulder. I turn around, my friend Joyce. She said, I said, no, 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 not right now. I'm talking to this hot saleswoman. <laughs> and I, when I looked, at this woman, I, my eyes had this skin below her chin. Her arms were out. And I looked down lower, and she had this pronounced cleavage and this low-cut black dress. I said, this is too much. <laughs> and I noticed her hands were out, and every single finger, there was a dangling necklace. <laughs> Something was wrong with this picture. So my friend tapped me and she said, look, I'm trying to tell you something. She said, you're talking to a mannequin. <laughs> There's people on your left, people on your right, and they're watching you. There's a crowd. I said, no. Oh, yeah. So I turned to the right and I turned to the left and they had mysterious, quizzical expressions like, what are you doing? And I looked at them and I said, um, you know, really, I was just looking for gloves. I mean, just black gloves. I really, I was like, oh, but just black gloves. I looked the other side, I said the same thing. I said, anyone, anyone? They walked away. But, and part of me wishes I weren't there, but I was glad I was there. <laughs>